Okay, so this is the last chapter, uh, multiple testing, chapter 13. Uh, in this chapter, we identify the challenges of performing multiple hypothesis testing, reproduce type one error by controlling the family wise error rate, balance type one and type two errors by controlling the false discovery rate, and finally calculate the p-values using a sampling, which is the last, the last bit is the lab. So basically it's everything in the lab. Okay. Um, so this chapter for me, it's very interesting because um, it's, uh, you know, the discussion within the frequencies and the Bayesian. Uh, here we are talking about p-values, okay? And, but not just one p-values, which belongs to uh, one hypothesis, but we're talking about the same hypothesis repeated a certain number of times. So we have a certain number of p-values. Uh, and then uh, th there is some, some, some interesting uh, discussion about this. So basically we deal with more than one hypothesis testing. Uh, until now we have made estimation, prediction. Now we do hypothesis, okay? What, um, um, this is quite, it's simple. It's an argument which is very simple, but sometimes can be like um, challenging in some senses, okay? Um, because you might get confused uh, about uh, uh, p-values, what's the threshold, how I can change it, what is it, what I can choose, what it, am I right, am I wrong? So it's simple, it's easy, it's straightforward, but challenging somehow. So basically, when we make hypothesis testing, let's say just a little recap, what is hypothesis testing? I'm doing an investigation. Uh, I have a certain type of data. Uh, I want to, I like to compare two groups and say, make an hypothesis, are they the same? Are they different? It's one greater than the other. I can think about the means, there is some basic statistics, like have they, have, uh, have, they uh, have the same uh, mean values, for example, on average, are they the same? So I can um, like make some, some hypothesis. The, the first hypothesis I uh, set is the new hypothesis, H0. So I start from that. Then if that is not verified, is not true, there is plan B. There is an hypothesis, which is an alternative to the new hypothesis, which is exactly the opposite. So if I make an hypothesis such as I'm doing a study uh, and um, I want, and I want, I like to understand uh, or verify if the mean in the control group is equal to the mean in the treatment group, for example. So my H0 will be that the two uh, mean values are the same, while the alternative hypothesis is exactly the opposite. So the, the mean values are not the same. So when we make an hypothesis, we follow some steps. First, we set the H0, the, the new hypothesis. Yes. So uh, then set, having set uh, a new hypothesis, so an alternative hypothesis, we, um, um, establish a p-value, which is a threshold that we should meet somehow. And this is to quantify the result of, uh, of our hypothesis testing. And then we make an, a t-statistic. 
Okay, this is, um, and then again, check the p-value against the t statistic. So in general, we have two hypotheses, H0 H and the uh, alternative. Um, what's happened now is that uh, uh, we want to test some particular set of new hypotheses. So let's say that we now not have just one, uh, like two groups to be compared, but we have a certain number of groups that we want to compare uh, in couple, okay? So let's say this is on uh, what, when we do like, um, cancer research, we want, we are searching for cells, uh, um, similarities, uh, characteristics, um, certain characteristics of cells. Uh, and so we want to maybe uh, for, for, for some, uh, under some condition verify if the means of um, each, uh, two groups within my or my set of uh, uh, predictors, they have the same mean, for example. So I'm, I'm making a comparison uh, each uh, for, for, for couples, for, for, for group of two of my predictors, okay? Um, so now- uh, what, what, sorry, yeah? Yeah? Just one comment. In the in the text in the textbook, uh, they mention when we study uh, multiple regression. Okay, remember in chapter three, I believe it, it was uh, multiple regression. Uh, the significance of the summary that you get from R on the p values is, uh, you know, the the null hypothesis there is if the if those coefficients, for example, if you have three predictors and you have three coefficients plus the intercept, uh, what it, uh, you have different null hypotheses there. For example, in one predictor, you can get a p-value, let's say of 0 0.5, okay? Mm -hmm. So that means that that coefficient in that, for that predictor, that coefficient is not statistically significant because there's a big probability, in fact, there's a 50% chance probability that that value will be zero, okay? Yeah. Because of the area. So you get, you know, different null hypotheses depending on the number of predictors, which is the number of coefficients, okay? Yeah. So you get exam a sample there of what, what it is. Then there's another, you know, statistics there, which is the F statistic, which says, okay, mm -hmm. If we only leave the, inter the intercept, okay, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get rid of those predictors. Mm -hmm. Is this model is this model relevant without the predictors or with the predictors? Uh -huh. Okay, and then you get another p-value for that f statistics. That means uh -huh. that the whole equation, the whole formula, mm -hmm. is statistically significant. Yeah. Okay? So there are different ways of looking at this uh, p-value. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, then, uh, we, in fact, when we say, for example, if I do, I have a certain number of, of predictors, they may follow a certain type of distribution. They can, can be uh, the uh, students distribution, they can be an F, distribu um, F statistics, they can, they can, they can be, uh, so a normal distribution, uh, so they, 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 they can, um, they, uh, distribution can take some shapes and based on, on the p-value, we can establish if the, to, if we know what's the, the, the shape of the distribution or the type of the distribution, we can um, judge our result differently. But this is the case. So we can say I've obtained a certain p-value and this p-value is uh, knowing that I'm talking about a normal distribution, for example, um, is close to the real average or not, OK? 
okay? But this is the case when we don't know what is the distribution of our data. So we are making hypotheses from scratch. So we are now uh, have a, a matrix of numbers. Uh, so a certain number of vectors and we compare them by two. And we say these two have the same mean, these other two have the same, and then we shuffle them all together. So this and this have the same mean. So we have a certain number of uh, P values as a result, because we are not comparing just two, predict two predictors, uh, two vectors, but a certain number of vectors each two. Okay, so having said that, uh, this may be challenging somehow because uh, you, um, I, I would think that we know how to do uh, hypothesis testing for just two predictors, okay? So we do uh, set an hypothesis, we do a test statistic, which a T statistic releases a T value, okay? And this T value, this T value will be of a certain level, large. If it's large, means something. If it's small, it's something. But what means large? What is the, the, the dimension, the unit of this, of the dimension of this T result? So we will, we are, we are going to see this now. So basically multiple testing, we do a multiple hypothesis, which releases a multiple uh, p-value. And then we need to investigate among all these p-values, which ones are the ones that, that can be interested in answering our question. So we want to restrict the result to add the lowest possible amount of p-values so we can establish a range and say that this, the, our investigation, uh, so the, the, the value, for example, the mean is effectively, uh, is in effect um, equals or not for all the predictors, for a certain number of predictors, for a proportion of all the predictors. So, are doing some investigation. And for this, we use the false discovery rate. Okay, so we are now going to see these things. Basically, so we define an hypothesis, make a test statistic, and then compute, it, compute a p-value, and then decide if to reject our starting hypothesis. The uh, what is a p, the p-value, okay, that we obtain? The p-value is to quantify the probability of having a value between the two, which is equal or more extreme than the, the test result. Okay, so the uh, tricky thing is this. The step is, um, we define a hypothesis and we said, what is that? Uh, we construct the uh, test statistic, which is this, okay? So in case we do, uh, we, we want to compare the mean and we want to see if they, they, they mean is equal for a certain number of large of predictors, we do a, a test statistic, which is now, um, uh, so this, in R, we use a t-test function, no? the t-test function. This t-test function releases a t-value, okay? You, you already explained this. In fact, I remember it very well. If this t-value is large in absolute value enough, uh, is large enough, then we, there, there is some ground to, uh, against the uh, new hypothesis. 
Okay. So for example, let's have a look at this image. We have a T value of 2.33. Uh, okay. This means that the, the rest of the, uh, the distribution is on the right side. It's on the left side. So we can establish that this little corner here after the T value exclude is the, the part that exclude what we are searching for, basically. Is that? Okay. So. Yeah, uh, Federica, I, I, I see yeah. it this way, okay? That yeah. T value, that T value, because we are trying to see what is the probability, right? Of that number being equal or higher, okay? Than okay. that T value. So that little corner that you said, you know, it will be it, it will be easier to appreciate. It was in a different color, okay? Or maybe uh, in uh -huh. a cross, okay? But that little yeah. snippet that is from the line of the curve to the, to the right, that's the area that corresponds to the p-value. Okay. okay. That's the area. And you will see in that example of the book, you'll see that that, that area is equal to 0 0.02, okay? So there's a 2% chance, okay? Mm -hmm. That that value, that value of T is equal or greater. Okay. Or greater, okay, so in other words, it's a 2%. Mm -hmm. So if we take a, a threshold, right? Because we have to set a threshold to decide if, if we're going to reject the, exactly. the null hypothesis yeah. or are we going to uh, no reject because we don't we don't accept <laughs> the null hypothesis and there's a, there's an explanation in the book on why we don't we don't do that okay we reject or we say that there's not enough evidence okay to reject mm -hmm. okay we, we don't accept you know in, in, in statistical uh, term terminology uh, we don't accept the null because we don't know for certain if the null is true okay exactly. we are assuming assuming that that's the, the 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 real the, you know the, the real hypothesis but we're not sure what we are doing is just computing this value to see if what kind of probability is that that null hypothesis is 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 is, is rejected okay okay so it's important you know that we you know understand that what we're computing with the p-value is really an area an area within you know, that that curve Mm -hmm. And for example, mm -hmm. if we do a threshold, let's say a threshold of 0 0.05, which is usually the traditional standard in, mm -hmm. you know, in, in this, this type of, of hypothesis, uh, you know, uh, hypothesis testing. Mm -hmm. If we take that as, as the, the threshold to see, okay, if the mm -hmm. p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject. If it's more than 0 0.05, then we don't reject. Okay? Exactly. So in this case, and I think you know, that, that's where you were going, in this case, then the 0 0.02 tells you that because it's smaller than 0 0.05, then we should reject the null hypothesis, mm -hmm. okay? In other words, we're saying that because of that low probability, 2%, there is a big chance. In other words, there's 98% chance that those means are not equal, <laughs> <laughs> okay? That, which okay. is the null hypothesis, right? that the means okay. are, are equal, that's what we're testing. So there's only a 2% chance that those means are equal, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a 98% yeah. that the complement, uh -huh. right? The complement is that it's not equal. Exactly. Okay. Basically, <laughs> what, what the, what the p-value does is uh, translating, let's say, uh, the t-statistic within a range of zero and one. So basically gives you the magnitude of the T statistic. So how much is, what, what large is it? Is, is large enough or not? So with the P value, we can establish uh, if this T statistic result is acceptable or not acceptable, so effectively large or small, basically. 
because otherwise we don't know uh, what that means. Means large, large enough. So the third step, indeed, is to compute a p-value. So the probability of observing a value which is equal or more extreme than the observed value. So p-value is uh, observing a t-statistic which is equal or more extreme than observed. Again, just to specify, no? Because it, the value has to be equal or more extreme than, than the observed statistic to be accepted. So the p-value let us interpret the scale of the uh, t statistic in, in, because we are examining the absolute value. So we don't know if it's uh, negative, positive, just the magnitude in itself, but we need to establish the, the damage. So having said that, uh, um, the fourth step is to identify again, if to reject or fail to reject the new hypothesis. So the smaller the p-value is, the stronger is the evidence against the new hypothesis. Okay, here, um, the, there is the nice uh, table from the book, which this bit here is, um, uh, this is the new hypothesis and this is the alternative hypothesis. The type one error is um, the probability. Uh, so I, what is the type one error? Is um, the, the new hypothesis is true, but um, I reject the new hypothesis. The type two error is the new hypothesis is false, but I don't, I don't reject the new hypothesis. So in general, we are now talking back about just hypothesis testing, uh, just a little recap, no? So in general, type one error is uh, more important than type two errors. But um, so in, in this case, we, yeah. I, I have a comment there, okay? The way that I, uh, uh, that, that I internalize, you know, what is the type one error? What is the type two error? Okay, because the confusion is in terms of the, are they the same or not? Okay, mm -hmm. and this example that we study when I study uh, statistics, uh, you know, stuck, stuck on me. Okay, in the in the U.S. legal system, okay, and maybe uh, you know I, I don't I don't know too well the European uh, continent, but also in England, you know, it, it applies. Um, in the criminal law, there is a fundamental principle that says that you are innocent until proven guilt, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, you are innocent yeah. until proven guilt. So the null hypothesis there is that you are innocent. That's the null hypothesis, you are mm -hmm. innocent. And then the alternate is that you are guilty, <laughs> right? Okay. So the type one error, the type one error is, it, it, you know, it, 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 it surfaces the type one error when an innocent person gets convicted. Exactly, okay? yeah. An innocent mm -hmm. person gets convicted. In other words, you know, we, uh, you know, uh, rejected the no the innocence <laughs> when he was when he was correct. Okay? Well, when he was correct, when the guy was innocent. Okay, and that really is something that you know raises an eyebrow, right? <laughs> you know, you don't want that. You don't want that, especially if it's you. <laughs> that that is in the you know in the in the hot seat. Then the two the type two error is when a person is guilty. The presumption is still innocent, okay? But the person committed committed the crime, uh -huh. okay? Committed the crime, but then the system lets him go. Yeah. Okay? So that that so, that's less. Yeah. Exactly. So now we have to do a balance. 
what mm -hmm. do we want the system to produce? Do we want innocent people go to jail or guilty people that are innocent, okay? Because that's no hypothesis, but they're guilty, uh, go free, okay? Supposedly, and it should work, and that's, this is something that is still you know, in discussion because you know, there's some studies that says that that's not the case usually, especially when you uh, rationally profile you know, the, the, the person, okay? You know, there's more bias within one group than the other. Okay, but that's mm -hmm. another, another topic for another book. So type but one then, error is heavier exactly, than type two error. What we want the system to produce is, okay, if the innocent, you know, guilty, we want to avoid that. Okay? Because that's something that is repulsive, is very repulsive to our, you know, to our business. Uh -huh. So we have to make a decision that the system is going to let go that person that is innocent in lieu of the person that is guilty, the presumption is innocent, but he goes free, okay? So the system should work that way, that is biased against people putting in jail people that is innocent. And let me tell you, that, that explanation, you know, it was one of the professors, that explanation really stuck him. They said, okay, now I understand what is type one error and type two error, and definitely they're not equal. Okay, and you can see, uh, I, I have seen this, for example, in some projects in churning, customer churn, uh, that you can apply this to, okay? In terms of, if you have a customer already subscribed, it's easier to maintain that customer subscribed than to let him go and then try to get him back, <laughs> okay? You know, it, it's, it's harder than getting new people you know, to your subscription, okay? Because that already sets a mind, that's a mindset in that customer that your your product is not good, okay? And you can see this type one error, type two, and the costs that are associated, not equal. Right. So here is a bit, uh, um, even the, the, uh, another part which is very interesting is the type one error rate which is the probability of type one error. While there is uh, um, the uh, power, which is the, the, um, the probability of not making type two error. So, and the power we are talking, we will talking about um, powers. Um, uh the, the the power and all the other things okay what, so, one more comment one more comment yeah there. Uh, because you want to fix that type one error you know with the with the alpha it's, it's called the alpha uh you want to fix it then the beta which is the type two error the beta uh a component uh the only way that then you can do it is increasing the sample size okay to make sure that that type error it's not, you know, it doesn't increase. The other, the, because you have to, or, or you fix beta or you fix alpha, okay? Uh -huh. Since we want to minimize that type one error, in other words, mm -hmm. we want to reject the null hypothesis when it's not true, okay? We don't want, you know, to reject it, you know, when, when it's true. So we fix that, that type, that, that type, you know, the possibility, which is alpha, okay? Which is, mm -hmm. you know, called, called alpha. Then, you have the other side, the type two. Okay, what are we going to do with that? Since we already fixed the alpha, the beta, okay, which is the type two error rate, it can only be decreased with increasing the sample size. <laughs> and this, uh, that, that is really the power. How many, uh, what is the size of the sample so that then I can also decrease that? Yeah, uh, type two error? but that, that's not. Um... Uh, so um, the book, um, I think the book did, did a, a very um, uh, good definition because it simplified the idea saying that uh, it is the probability of not making type two error. Then you identify which is the type two error uh, because physically is a number. Okay, because 
it's the number of uh, false negatives. Now I'm, I'm saying, uh, so type two error is false negative, type one error are false positive. So they are physically a number. So thinking about power as the probability of, of not making type two error is the probability of one minus the probability so it's one minus the probability of um, making type two error. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you this way, uh, uh, for the, the, me, the problem it's is, clear. The, 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 the problem is when, when you see it in practice, what happens is that when you fix, you know, the alpha, which is the probability yeah. of making a type one error, because you always have a chance of making that error, or you want to minimize it, right? You want to minimize it then you already get uh, the, the probability of the type two, the, the type two error, okay? You know, it, mm -hmm. it, it goes one, one, one with the other. You, you, cannot, you cannot delink, okay? They, they, mm -hmm. they, are, they, they are there. So what happens is that what you do is set the type one error, the probability of committing the type one error low. And then the only way that you can, you know, manage that type two error is with the sample size. Okay, the, the greater the sample size, the greater sample size, the lesser, you know, and that's the assumption, right? The lesser the type two error, because once you increase the sample size, then you uh. get more, uh, you know, more data to predict what is that type two error, mm. okay? If your sample size is not adequate, then you can get a large, you know, type two error because you are trying to minimize the type one. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it, it's like the bias. It, it's, it's like the trade off the bias and the bias. It's something mm -hmm. similar, uh, analog. Yeah. Okay? You mm -hmm. have to, you know, choose, you know, which one you want to minimize, mm -hmm. and the other try to manage. Okay. Yeah. The same thing here. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's talk about a certain number m of new hypothesis. So now we don't have just one new hypothesis, but we have, but we have M new hypothesis. So let's say, for example, that we have a p-value of 0 0.01, okay? So we reject a new hypothesis when the p-value, um, with a p-value less than 0 0.01. So, how many type one error are to expect? For example, the p-value, uh, if the p-value is less than alpha, when alpha is equal to 0 0.01, there is one chance to false reject H0 if uh, H0 is true. When I am talking about M new hypothesis, not just one. So this is the case, uh, it's an example. So this is my alpha, so set to 0 0.01, okay? And I have one p-value. And then I just need to decide p-value is less or it's greater or, uh, or not than I. Now I have M p-values. So M new hypothesis and M P values. So now there is one chance of rejecting a single H0 and M times 0 0.01 false rejection in total. So basically now we have M P values. So if in R, I do some uh, resampling in a way that I obtain a certain number of P values, then this number of P values, if I check the number of this list with it, uh, uh, to see if how many of them are below 0 0.01, it might be zero, it might be one, it might be alpha of the sample on average, okay? So I need to 
uh, uh, make distinct proportion because now my sample is larger, is greater than having just one element. I do not have one element, I have M elements. So now I make a proportion. So this is a correction or an adjustment to just uh, uh, checking the p-value against a single alpha uh, level, okay? And there are some, some different type of methods, techniques that can be used. Before uh, telling the different type of corrections, we need to say that uh, the error that we make in, is not just one error, but it's a family of errors because we don't have just one element. We have a certain number of elements. So the, our, the error that we make, it's magnified. So this is the same uh, table as before. Okay, but now it's a little bit more specific. So it's a, 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 at the same time a little bit more confusing as well, because this is the same as before. So this is H0 and this is the alternative, just as the same as before. So before here, uh, we had uh, the type one error, which is now V. And this W, it's type two error. Okay, so, but this is now to, for, for us to understand that uh, uh, there may be a certain number of these this, um, happenings. So we have a V value and uh, the, the opposite U, we have a W value and the opposite and the remaining of the. Okay, so in uh, M uh, hypothesis, uh, this, the, the difference between the, the new hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, um, uh, give us access to cal uh, calculating the, the, uh, the family-wise family error rate. So give us the, the possibility to uh, consider the type one error that has to be at least greater than one. So, because it's not just one, it's more than one. So absolutely it must be the, at least one, at least one type one error will be within all my results. So, so I want to consider uh, what, is, what can be this probability. So the probability of at least one type one error. So this probability, is at the end one minus one minus alpha powered m to the m. So that means that uh, if I have all, so no type one errors at all, this is the, the multiplication of the opposite of alpha. If alpha is 0 0.01, one minus alpha is 0 0.99, no? So for one uh, hypothesis, for M hypothesis is the multiplication of 0 0.99 times 0 0.99 times 0 0.99 to the number of, uh, until up to the number of, of my uh, hypothesis, so my M. So this is probability, no? Because um, when uh, the, 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 the probability um, is the, can, so more than one element can happen at the same time, you multiply the probability. So you, you do a multiplication of it. 
which is different that uh, if something happened, the other doesn't happen, you do a sum, okay? You sum the element. But when both can happen at the same time, you do a multiplication. But with uh, an underneath hypothesis that the elements are independent. So the verification of one doesn't imply the verification of the other. Okay, to conclude, the family-wise error rate, it's a probability. So the probability of, of at least one type one error. And this is given by one minus one minus alpha powered to the n. Okay, now that we have very, uh, we know what is the probability of committing at least one error, one type one error, we can control this, this probability, no? With some correction. One of the correction is the Bonferroni correction, which basically says, why I don't use alpha divided by M, the number of hypotheses, just alpha divided by M instead of alpha. So that will be my new threshold. When I, I, I have the list of P values, instead of checking them against alpha, I check them against alpha divided by M. It's a correction, okay? Which says fewer need to be lower than alpha, okay? Because this is just one. The probability of committing just one, type one error, but we have M errors. So this probability is definitely less than alpha. It's lower, okay? Seeing that this is lower, I can put this correction. So I'm multiply and dividing for a same um, for, for a same value, it's the same, no? So I take this alpha divided by m as my new threshold. So I make my correction. So this is my new alpha. Alpha Bonferroni. Bonferroni. Okay, then there is other type of correction, which are Holmes step down, two case method, Schaeffer method. Okay, the last two are more, a little bit more specific. So like you have five managers, that, that in the book there is an example of managers. There's a list of managers. I've selected just five. I want to see within these five, who is the one who breaks the market. Okay, I do my analysis and I found that two of these five can be um, breaking the market. Okay, so now I need to, I want a double check. And this is the case when these other two methods uh, come into place. Okay, so we are now not talking. If, if you are interested, you can. Have a look. This is a step forward. So for specific conditions. Then the other uh, second uh, correction method, it's Holmes. Okay. In this case, what we do is having, as we have a list of p-values, we put them in order from the lowest to the highest. Okay. So the, the smallest to the, uh, to, the, to the greatest. And then we say, uh, we, we search for the index, which is the minimum between the one that goes over this, my, this correction, alpha divided by M plus one minus J, which is the, the index of, of the P. Okay. So this releases, uh, so um, this L is the index J that let me uh, identify my P-value. 
which one is from the list of the p-values, the one that I'm interested in. So this can be three, two, four. So uh, what my, my the, the, p, the search p-value will be p sub three, two, four, oh. Okay, so then uh, here is the power. Okay, so if we go back to the um, table, this is S, okay, which is the uh, true positive, which are the true, the number of true positives. And this is our, these are the type two errors, no? So this is when alpha, so the alternative hypothesis is correct. And so these are the true positives. If I do the true positive the, divided by the number of tests minus my one value, the, the M0 is this value here. So the sum of these two. These are the number of true positive, um, of false positives, uh, and these are the number of true negatives. So M0, M0, let's see if I can write it, M0 zero, it's equal to the uh, false positive plus the true negative. So this is my M zero. So M is the number of tests minus M zero. These are all numbers that I should have, should be able to calculate, okay? So the power, now I can uh, stop using these annotations, okay. So the power is the number of false um, H0. And I, I can calculate the power this way. So the true positive, let's go back the true positive divided by M minus M zero, M zero. And M zero is what I said, okay? So I can uh, calculate this thing. And so I have a probability and this is the probability of committing type two error. Uh, you can see Ferrica that it says that when M increases, the power decreases, right? Which is yeah. associated with the type two uh, uh, error rate. And the M is your, your sample size. Yeah. <laughs> that's, your, that, that's your sample. As you increase your sample size, your power decreases, and then your type two error also should, should decrease also. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this is, um... okay, now what's happened? What is this false discovery rate? So we have talked about the fewer, so the family wise error rate, which is the probability of committing at least one type one error. Okay, but this is a bit stringent. So it's a bit strict. We need something a bit more. So we are uh, actually sure to find more than one. Okay, so we want something um, a little bit different. So we use the, this false is done by V divided by V plus S. Okay, and going back, I should have uh, taken this, this uh, table. This V, okay, 
uh, is the type uh, is the are the uh, false positives. Okay, so this one here will be the false the false positive divided by the false positive plus the true positive. Okay, this is my false discovery error rate. The sum of these two, the false and the true positive, the sum of this is R. Okay, this uh, false discovery, uh, then this leads you to find a false discovery proportion. When you don't have this split in false positive and true positive, but you have just the sum, you are talking about the false discovery proportion. Okay, so you might find this is a the theoretical uh, condition. So we are talking about theory of hypo multiple hypothesis testing. So they talking about different uh, conditions that you might find yourself. So this is a book of theory, no? That not just a specific example. Then uh, this false uh, discovery rate, uh, it's basically equals to the expected value of this false discovery proportion. So, so you expect that the sum of these two, the false positive and the true positive is R, okay? So basically on average, you can say that the false discovery rate is the average of this value here. It depends by where are you starting from. If you're starting from having this value of you are retrieving this value somehow. Okay. Um, then there are some other, um, again, um, this book has made the things clearer because I had a little bit of confusion. So the family wise error rate, which we have used to make correction with Bonferroni and, and, and uh, false correction. Now, we, has, uh, we have said that it's a little bit strict. It's a bit stringent and everything. So we have decided to think we know that there will be more than one type one error. So we are talking about the average value with say a, a bit more elastic, say we're talking about the average value of the proportion of these two, okay? And this is the, um, uh, this, this um, procedure lets us identify a value Q, which we can set, and that will be a sort of threshold that we use to identify, just as the same as before, an index for our p-value, which will be the p-value that we use to compare the list again, it will be different. Because now we don't have just 0 0.01, 0 0.05, but we have a specific p-value to compare all the others. And we search within the list, which one is the most appropriate. So this is the benjamin Ockberg procedure. And in this case, we find, we find the p-value, which is, uh, uh, the J, so again, we order the p-value from the lowest to the, um, to the highest. And then uh, we reject the p-value, which is lower than p-L, 
and L is the index that we have found this way, setting a threshold. And here we don't have alpha as before. Before we did alpha divided by M, we use that as a threshold to choose within our p-value. Now we have this QJ, and this QJ is just the index, the number of things. If this is P1 or P2, this will be two divided by M. So our L is the maximum value within this range of P values, where PJ is lower than the proportion of the index on M. Okay, in conclusion, on average, no more than a fraction of Q of rejected H0 are false positive. Okay, so this is the lab. Now we have 10 minutes left, but basically what they do is, um, uh, so this is a uh, replication, a matrix, and these are some values, okay. I do a t-test on my uh, sample. Uh, Erica, I, I have yeah. 12 here. I don't Can know. You, take your uh, you have? Uh, 12, 1159. <laughs> Just have one minute. Ah, yeah, yes, yeah. No, it's it's uh, it's time. It's time. I don't know. Maybe I'll see. Okay, so it's basically useful to start. But this is the lab. Mm -hmm. uh, we have talked basically of this thing. Um, hope uh, for me this this chapter has made the thing clearer about these things. Very very well written, I can say. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and also the discussion of type one and type two error is relevant because uh, you're going to see it in the confusion matrix on mm -hmm. the on, on your classify uh, algorithm. I don't know. It. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when when you do the confusion matrix, you know that's where you know that box, you know where you see the V, the W, and all that, you know, uh -huh. and all these uh, computations, uh, yeah. they're yeah. going to become more rel relevant. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's a representation. That box is a representation of what is called a confusion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we still uh, we will uh, catch up on Slack and see if we will meet next week uh, to, sure. to finish the lab. Or, so we will see. We yeah, I'm, I'm, I I I vote you know to you know wrap it up finish finish the the lab. You know? Okay. Yeah. It's, it, because it is good discussion. Now that we have the theory, now let's apply it and see what yeah. kind of, yeah. you know, what, 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 what kind of, uh, you know, interesting things you, know, <laughs> you, can, you can experiment. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. See All right. You also. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>